What's happening? Sojourner Life here. Um, gonna do another video with this uh, Mitchell acoustic bass. Gonna show you guys how to change the strings. Want to start off with a little demo though. So um, here's like a jam version of uh, Death from Above 1979. Yeah, here you go. change the strings and see how it sounds after. So now it's time to change the strings. Got everything I need, which is basically just strings and the bass. Um, I'm going to clean it a little bit. So I got a taco towel. Of course, you could use a non taco towel or like kind of anything. I'm just going to wipe it down. This thing isn't like a gloss finish same thing with the uh, fretboard so don't want to put water on here like ideally I would put some oil but you know um, and then a tuner just to make sure I get back to where I need to be right so start with just first thing you're gonna do is just drop all of your strings do them somewhat evenly I don't know if this is actual good advice or just some advice on personal preference but I don't take strings off while other strings are fully loaded. I don't want to like warp my neck. I don't know if that's possible, but just avoid that by doing that. So um, yeah, once you get them pretty loose, you'll see the coils kind of getting big. You can just kind of pull those up. Um, do the same on all of them. And uh, what you really want to do is notice how these strings are. They're all kind of towards the inside. Um, and you want to, you know, if, if this is being used by someone with a different kind of, uh, acoustic bass or bass or whatever, um, this is how you change guitar strings too. So, um, this is for all y'all, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, you just want to make sure you're winding the string the same way or else you're going to mess up your intonation. And, uh, the E's always the hardest. So now you got your, uh, Medusa. Um, right up here you can see the colors, so this is a bridge, oh, terrible noises, okay, RIP, um, headphone users, but you should have known this was coming, it's your fault, alright, I'm going to set it back down. Get these out. Try not to scrape the guitar or scrape the guitar because, you know, this ain't no art piece. It's a tool to use. Um, and likewise, you can see how uh, like dark these strings have gotten. Um, it isn't that they're rusted or anything. It's that they lost a lot of their brightness, um, both in color and also sound. Uh, so you end up with a lot brighter tone when you get the new ones on there and stuff. So it's just, uh, it's a personal preference to change them before they start hurting your fingers or before you pop your G string like I always do. Um, but when you're ready, you're ready and I'm ready. Ow. Um. <laughs> So go ahead and cut. I'm... 
So yeah, um, I kind of touched the end of the string there and cut my finger. So don't do that, um, especially if you cut your strings as opposed to leaving like crazy strings coming off the end. So yeah, trying to poke it through at the end here. Um, I realized, yeah, I'm better off grabbing my pliers, giving myself a little help. Can be sharp, so don't do what I did. I almost wiped the blood and, you know, never want to do that. So now that my strings are off, um, oh, don't bash your uh, headstock into the table, but um, go ahead and use your towel to just wipe everything. Make sure to get the cracks, get all the frets, just kind of really kind of put a little force in it. Get as much of the stuff clean as you can. This isn't a guitar cleaning video, this is a string changing video. So if you're more interested in changing your strings than cleaning your guitar, this is how to do it. Um, all right, now I'm gonna get the headstock, um, you know, get around all the tuners, get all the dust off there. It all, it definitely accumulates dust in between string changes, so this is your chance. You let it get too dirty, then you gotta go to someone else's video for how to clean a guitar. Um, there we go. So, got her spick and span. Um, wow, interesting. So, Fender puts all the strings together. These are interesting. Um, Fender 45, uh, standard weight that I'm used to. Um, but usually they're in their own packs and it isn't plastic. I don't, eh, I prefer the paper sleeves. Kind of bummed on that, but whatever, it's all right. Um, start with my G string, which I guess is a teal color, which kind of matches the taco towel, I approve. Um, so yeah, G string, it's the one closest to me. So just start by throwing it through that bridge, run her on up there. Um, you want to make sure it's seated here and when you lay it into your nut up here um, you got to make sure you're in this groove and kind of eyeball just a little bit past um, this is if you're trying to um, cut your strings but um, yeah so you want to eyeball like maybe an inch or like uh, you know what is that 2.5 centimeters past uh, where your tuning peg is um, and you can cut it there or you put a little bit of slack on it and you can just lay it across if you don't want to cut your, um, I, and actually some guitars do not have a place where you can drop it in there. So I pulled it back. It's real loose right now. I'm going to grab those pliers and, um, I'm actually happy the string cut me cause it reminded me that I wanted to cut my strings. So get them back real quick. It's never easy. I just kind of pinch them as best I can and get them to break off. That's why they end up real sharp and, Hurry. Um, oh, that's fun. There we go. Okay. So you kind of shove your string down in the in the hole of the tuning peg there, and then remember your direction that the string's coming in. Um, on even space headstocks, you always want to have the string going to the inside. As far as I know, I don't know. Someone undoubtedly does it a weird way, but traditional symmetric headstocks you do that leave it loose don't tighten it too much don't get it near tune while you're putting on your strings because the whole thing is going to bend bend together um, so I'm just going to go down um, some people would put them on hopping from side to side or whatever I don't know just grab them, put them in there, don't tighten them up to the end, and then kind of tighten them evenly. And of course, do that more cautiously if you care more about preserving the finish of your guitar. Um, this thing is a beautiful thing, but it's utilitarian for me. So I don't mind it getting beat up. I would never do this to my electric, which I care very much about. This thing I care, but I would love for it to kind of get a road worn look. We're free. Okay. Once again, get her in the hole. Start tying her up. So I'm gonna use this moment right here to give a shout out to my two favorite music YouTube channels. 
Um, bass, we got Davey504. The dude is hilarious. He's also insanely sick. But I can't believe he, ha he hasn't been playing bass as long as I expected him to. Um, I've been playing forever. He's actually who inspired me to start slapping a little bit. Um, the other the other channel I want to shout out is Two Set Violin, who we recently got into a... Oh yeah, nothing like the sound of a fresh string in the morning, right? Um, so anyways, Two Set Violin, he recently got into a battle with, because they're obviously classical violin musicians. And uh, I ended up watching their channel a little bit afterwards. And uh, they've convinced me to practice 40 hours every day. Um, so I've, you know, learned the graces of the Ling Ling. And um, I don't know, it's kind of encouraged me to just put in a lot of effort to keep practicing guitar and bass. And uh, I think I've made some decent progress from where I've talked to you guys last. When I watch that video, I'm just cringing the whole time. But um, yeah, and the whole reason I'm doing this video is because of uh, comments that were left encouraging me to do more videos, keep talking, like what? I got so much support from you guys, I, I can't believe it. I just, when I, was, when I was looking up this guitar, I did not find any reviews for it. And I thought that was bad. And so I almost just kind of discounted it. And then I got the chance to play one and I was like, whoa. Like, I was blown away. So, you know, without the chance to play stuff right now in a lot of places, you know, um, I wanted to kind of give it a shout out during the pandemic because um, that was a, the quarantine, you know, I guess most of us are out of it, but uh, yeah. the quarantine was a great time to kind of pick up a new hobby and I know that at least some of you out there were getting at least your first acoustic bass, maybe. I haven't been playing bass that much because it's so loud. I, I live in apartments, you know, you can't really turn it up except on the Saturdays. Oh, classic problem here. Got to get this last part of the string off. Okay, here we go. And this one I left pretty short. All right, so anyways, two set violin, Davy 504, thank you guys so much. Everyone in the comments section, I love you guys. Uh, you guys really made me feel good every time I saw a new comment. So now we're getting close. So I'm gonna tighten them up until they stop slapping. All right, and um, got my snark tuner right here, and I'll just start with the uh, with the G string. Pretty close. Take it to F. Okay, so now D string. C is good for D. Um, again, I'm doing this just so I can start tightening up the strings before actually tuning them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my bass up. I'm at C sharp. You see, be careful. Don't go too far. Where's my E? Ooh. Sounds like metal. Drop B. Okay. I'm at D. I'm just gonna stop at D and uh, I'm gonna stand up, finish tuning, and give you a little demo with the new bright strings. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna start with um, getting the, e, the low E in tune pretty close, good enough. Um, and then I'm gonna bring my, 
wow, lucky twist of the A right there. Um, go on to the D string. Get that showing green, looking good. Get that G string. Don't go too high on the G string. That's the one that always breaks. If you have a nice music center, sometimes they hook you up. But usually you just gotta buy a new set. There you go, gotta turn the E up a little bit. Whenever you adjust one of the big strings, check your high string. Look, I'm a little low maybe. There we go. I always prefer to be a little high than low. My mom said I was a sharp boy, you know. Shout out to my mom. All right, um, here we go. So, a lot louder, more presence, slap. Um, it's just, you know, it's louder and thrashier, you know. So when you first get it in, you're in a breaking in period, and until you kind of really beat it up a little bit, it's gonna sound pretty bright. Um, and yeah, let me hit the rest of that for you. Catch you guys next time. Leave a message in the comments if you want me to make another video. Um, I was stressed in making this one, but it was fun. So uh, like, subscribe, maybe I'll be a channel. Later.